Okay, this is a re-recording of the previous video that we did in class for module 15. So I'm going to kind of go through this whole module. Um, everything's already written out for me, so I'm just going to go over it. So the first topic is simplifying a ratio of factored polynomials. So we're, all we're doing is factoring out entire factors that are exactly the same, or if you have numerical values, then we're reducing those numerical values. So here I have a 3x minus 2 and a 3x minus 2. You could think of them as canceling, but really what you're doing is you're reducing it by itself here, leaving you with the number 1, and reducing this by itself, which leaves you with the number 1. Um, here we're reducing the numbers by 5, so we get 1 and 4, and then we're just multiplying what's left together. So on top I have 4 times 1, which is 4. On the bottom I have 1 times x minus 2 times 1, which is x minus 2. For the next example, again, 3v minus 5 and 3v minus 5 can be considered as canceling. 4 and 28 can be reduced by 4, giving me 1 and 7, and this cannot reduce with anything downstairs, so it stays. 1 times 1 times this factor is v minus 3. 7 times 1 is 7. Over here, now we have exponents. So 45 and 25 can be reduced by 5, we get 9 and 5. I have u and u squared, the most I can cancel is a single u. So if I cancel the single u here, all I'm left is the numerical value 1. If I cancel out a single u here, I still have a u left. Here I have u plus 2 squared, u plus 2 cubed, so I can cancel out um, two of the u plus 2 factors, meaning both of these factors would go away, leaving me with the numerical value 1, and two of these factors going away, leaving me with one factor still. Here, this cannot reduce with anything in the denominator, so it will stay. 9 times 1 times 1 times this factor is this numerator. 5 times u times u plus 2 is this denominator. Here, 25 and 15 can both be reduced by 5. We get 5 and 3. 3x plus 2 squared, 3x plus 2 cubed, so we can cancel two of these factors, leaving me with one factor. Here, I have x plus 3 to the fifth, x or I'm sorry, x minus 3 to the 5th, x minus 3 to the 4th, so I can cancel out 4 of them, leaving me with no more factors here, but one more factor there. 5 times 1 times x minus 3 is this numerator, 3 times 1 times this factor is this denominator. So for this next example, um, we will need to factor everything in the numerator and in the denominator before we can um, before we can simplify. So we can factor out a 4w for the numerator, leaving me with 2w minus 3, and a 4w in the denominator, leaving me with w minus 4. So we end up with just 2w minus 3 in the numerator and w minus 4 in the denominator. For the next example, we have um, can factor out a 6x in the numerator and we can factor out a 6x in the denominator. When we do that, in the parentheses, we're left with 3x plus 5 and x plus 2. So the 6x's will cancel each other out or reduce and leaving us with just the 3x plus 5 in the numerator and the x plus 2 in the denominator. Now the second example, or this next page, is simplifying a ratio, linear polynomials, 1, negative 1, and no simplification. So here, if it cannot be simplified, you just click on the button that says cannot be simplified. But um, if it can, you must do so. So here, make sure you do these three steps. Make sure that the terms are in descending order, meaning you have the leading term, which is the term with the highest exponent, then the next highest exponent all the way down until you get to the single variable with the coefficient, and then finally the constant where there's no variables at all. So in this case, we don't have any exponents on our variables, so really we're just dealing with these two terms here where you have the single variable term and then you have the constant term. So they have to be in that order, the single variable first and then the constant. Um, the second thing you need to do is factor if possible, okay? 
and then the last thing you do is just reduce them. So for the top one, they are already written in the proper order. You have 8v, which is your variable term, plus 3, which is your constant term. And in the denominator, you also have it written in the correct form, where it has the variable term 3b in the front, and then the plus 8, which is the um, constant term in the back. However, you cannot factor anything from 8v plus 3, and you cannot factor anything from 3v plus 8. Therefore, this factor does not match that factor, so this one cannot be simplified. Here, however, they are written in the correct order, your variables and then your constants, variables and then your constants, but whenever your first term is negative, you are forced to factor out that negative. And since v and 5 have nothing more in common, we can only factor out a negative 1 leaving me with a positive v and a positive 5. But now, this factor matches what's in the denominator, and if it helps your eyes, put the denominator in parentheses to better realize that those are exactly the same factor, so you can cancel them or reduce them, leaving you with just the negative 1. Now, the third example is different. You have w minus 5, which is written properly, but here, this is not written properly. We need to swap it. So the 5 is negative and the w is positive. So if we swap them around, the positive w will go in the front and the negative w will go in the back and now it looks like w minus 5. Now this is exactly the same as that and again, if it helps you to put the parentheses in there, then do so. But you can see that one factor is the same as the other factor and they will just cancel, um, leaving you with 1 over 1, which is 1. Or you can just remember that there are invisible ones here and here. So even though these cancel, you still have those invisible ones in the numerator and in the denominator. For the fourth example, those are not in the correct order. So you do have to put the positive 5 u's in front and then the positive 6 in the back. When I do that, I get this. Again, this looks exactly like this. So if those cancel, you still have the little invisible ones in the front so you still get 1. The idea here is anything divided by itself will equal 1. Okay, simplifying a ratio of polynomials by factoring a quadratic with leading coefficient of 1. So you factor your numerator, and we did so here, and we got x plus 4 over times x plus 2. We noticed that the x plus 4 is matched, so we reduced by x plus 4, and all we had left was x plus 2 at the top and the number 1 at the bottom. So then when we finish, anything over 1 is just a whole number. So we can write this fraction as just x plus 2. This next example, we factor x squared minus 9 and we get x plus 3 times x minus 1. When we do that, um, the x plus 3 in the denominator will cancel with the x plus factor in the numerator, leaving you with x minus 3 over 1, which is again can be written as just a whole number, x minus 3. Now the third example has u plus 3 in the top and then a trinomial at the bottom. So we factored the trinomial at the bottom into u plus 3 times u plus 3, and we noticed that this one up here could cancel with one of the ones down here. We chose to do the one on the left. It really wouldn't have mattered if I had chose to do the one on the right. The key thing to remember here is that one factor from the top cancels with one factor from the bottom. So the u plus 3 on the top cannot wipe out both of the u plus 3s at the bottom. Okay, So we are still left with the u plus 3 at the bottom, and that can is not representing a whole number. So that cannot be rewritten as just u plus 3. If the 1 were in the denominator, then this could be written as a whole number and you could just write u plus 3. But since the u plus 3 is in the denominator, the answer is stuck just like that. Now the next topic is simplifying a ratio of polynomials problem type 1. So the same thing, factor everything and then simplify. You just have to remember when you're factoring, the very first step of factoring is to factor out the GCF. So on this problem, we did factor out the GCF, which was 4 in the numerator, and we ended up with 
4 times y squared minus 4. Then we factored the numerator and the denominator completely. So y squared minus 4 factored into y plus 2, y minus 2. The y squared minus 2y minus 8 factored into y plus 2 and y minus 4. And you can't forget to bring your GCF over. So the 4 is still there in the front in the numerator. We notice that the y plus 2s were the same, so we canceled those factors. And we ended up with 4 times y minus 2 over the y minus 4. Now the next example, we factored out the GCF of 3, ended up with x squared minus 25, and this is a difference of squares, which factored into x plus 5 and x minus 5, again the GCF staying there. This factored into x plus 5, x minus 4, the x plus 5 factors cancelled, we end up with 3 times x minus 5 over x minus 4. Next topic is simplifying a ratio of polynomials problem type 2. So factored our numerator into, or first we try to do the GCF. So this had no GCF. This had a GCF of 5, but since the front number is negative, we were forced to factor out that negative. Excuse me. So we ended up with v squared minus 16 on the inside of the parentheses. This difference of squares factors into v plus 4 and v minus 4. This trinomial factors into v plus 4, v plus 2. So the v plus 4s do cancel, so we still have v plus 2 at the top and negative 5 times v minus 4 at the bottom. However, in Alex or in any homework platform system, they would like the denominator to be negative, so they move the negative up to the side. Okay. Now, here in this problem, we factored out the GCF at the top, which was 3, but because the first term is negative, we were forced to factor out a negative 3. That left us with y squared plus 11y plus 28. Then we factored this trinomial and this trinomial into these factors. We noticed these two factors were the same, so we were left with these two factors on the top, this one factor at the bottom. And again, you can leave it at the top, they don't have a problem with that, but if you wanted to be formal, you could write it in the front. You just keep in mind this thing here. Whether the negative is in the front, at the top, or at the bottom, it does not make a difference. They are all equivalent. It's just Alex doesn't accept this one, okay? They'll accept the negative if it's at the top or if it's in the front. So I always, by habit, just always put them in the front if I need to. Okay, simplifying a ratio of polynomials problem type 3. So here we factored the numerator and we got x minus 5, x plus 2. We factored the denominator, which was 7x minus 1 and x plus 2. The only thing different here is you do have to do the whole AC method in order to factor them when they have a number in front. You can't do a shortcut. So once we had that, we noticed these factors were the same. So we reduced by those and we ended up with x minus 5 over 7x minus 1. Similarly here, I broke it down into colors. I took the top and put it in blue. I took the bottom and put it in green. But essentially, we factored it down to these two factors and these two factors, these factors being the same. Therefore, we canceled them, and we were left with y minus 3 over y plus 3. Multiplying rational expressions. The idea here is that you can reduce before you multiply, or you can multiply first and then reduce. However, it is easier if you reduce first. Otherwise, if you multiply first, you have these really large things that can get a little messy when you try to reduce. So what we did here was we reduced, um, and you have to keep the same concept. One top with one bottom can be reduced. So we noticed that we had 10 and 2, which could both be reduced by 2, giving us 1 and 5. We noticed that 3 and 9 could be reduced by 3, giving us 1 and 3. We noticed the a at the bottom and the a at the top could cancel. We noticed that this y could cancel with one of those y's, leaving us with y to the fourth. But then we had another y down here, which could cancel with another y over here, leaving us now with y cubed. So if we multiply our leftovers, it's 5 times y cubed times 1, which is 5y cubed. And then down here, we're left with 3 times 1, which is just 3. Now, I did do the problem in three different ways in class, um, but you can just use the one that I've covered right now. So we'll 
kind of recap that here. So here we've got 4 and 8, which can both be reduced by 4. We get 2 and 1. We have 3 and 15, which can both be reduced by 3, giving us 5 and 1. We have a b here, which can cancel with one of these b's here, leaving us with b squared. We have a y here that canceled with this y. And so then what we're left with is 1 b squared y squared times 5, which gives us 5 b squared y squared. Downstairs, we're left with 1 times 2, which is 2. Over here, we have to make sure we factor everything before we can cancel or reduce. So x plus 3 is its own factor. It doesn't have a GCF. Here we factored out a GCF of 4. Here we factored out a GCF of 5. And here we factored out a GCF of 3. So we notice that the x plus 4s could reduce, the x plus 3 could reduce, the 4 and the 8 could reduce to 1 and 2. So we ended up with just 2 in the numerator and 1 times 3 in the denominator, which gave us 3. Now here we factored out 8 from the numerator. We factored out 9 from the denominator. We could not factor anything from this numerator. And here we factored out a 2. So we canceled the x plus 7s. We canceled the 9x minus 4s. We noticed that 8 and 2 could be reduced by 2, giving us 1 and 4. So we had 4 left on the top and 9 times 1, which is 9 on the bottom. Here we did the same thing, factored out a 3, factored this into its two binomials, factored this into its two binomials, and then that could be factored. So the x minus 2's canceled, the x minus 1's could cancel, but we were still left with 3 times x plus 3, and we were still left with this x plus 2. Here we factored this into its two binomials, this could not be factored, this factored into its two binomials, and this factored a 3 out. So the x minus 3 is cancelled, the x plus 2 is cancelled, and we were left with x minus 2 in the top and 3 times x plus 1 at the bottom. Multiplying rational expressions involving quadratics with leading coefficients greater than 1. So we factored the GCF here and we got 2 times x minus 4. We factored the difference of squares here, 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. This could not be factored, this could not be factored. 2x plus 3 is cancelled, leaving us with these two factors in the numerator and these two factors in the denominator. We factored this numerator into its binomials, this factored out of 4, that could not be factored, this we factored into its two binomials. These factors cancelled, these factors cancelled, leaving me with 2x plus 5 in the top and 4 times x plus 3 at the bottom. Same thing here, it's just you have y's now, so if you have x squareds in the front, you put x and x. If you have y squareds in the back, put y and y, but you still need to figure out the numbers and the signs. So we factored this into these two factors, we factored this denominator into these two factors. Here you could only factor out a GCF of 5, and here you could not factor. So these two factors match, those two factors match, leaving us with these two factors in the numerator and the one factor in the denominator. Here we factored the numerator, here we factored out a 4 in the denominator, this could not factor, and this we factored into its two binomials. Two factors cancelled here, these factors cancelled there, leaving me with x plus 1y at the top and 4 times x minus 2y at the bottom. You don't have to write that one, so this is also an acceptable answer, just x plus y in the top. Now going on to dividing rational expressions. The idea here is to keep the first fraction the same, change the division to, mu to, to multiplication, and then flip the second fraction. So remember that division is nothing more than multiplication of the reciprocal. You just have to remember that you always reciprocate or flip whatever's to the right of the division sum. Symbol. Never do you ever flip what is in front of the division symbol or to the left of the division symbol. So we kept this fraction the same, we changed that to multiplication, and we flipped this fraction over. Then we went in straight into the reducing. So we reduced 12 and 3 by 3, giving us 1 and 4. We reduced an A and an A. Here we reduced 10 and 4 by 2, giving us 2 and 5. We reduced a B. Oh, we didn't reduce this B. We chose to reduce this B with that B. Um, there's no other b's left on the top to, to reduce this one. So you're left with 4 times 2, which is 8, 5b times 1, which is 5b. 
Same thing here, keep this fraction the same, change it to times, flip this over. We had canceled or reduced the six and the two by two, so we got one and three. Then we reduced the three and the 12 by three, giving us one and four. We chose to cancel these X's and we chose to cancel these B's, leaving us with still an X. So three X times one is three X, four times one is four. Same thing here, but we had to make sure that we flipped the correct one and then we factored everything. So we kept the first one, changed it to times, flipped this over, factored everybody, canceled the like factors, reduced the numbers if we could, and we ended up with two on the top and seven at the bottom. Same thing here, keep, change, flip. So then we factor, this cannot be factored, this cannot be factored, but two X plus six, we factored out the two. 4x plus 32, we factored out the 4. The only thing we could cancel here was the x plus 3s, leaving us with 8x plus 5 at the top, and 2 times 4 times x plus 8 at the bottom, which is actually 8x plus 8. Same thing, keep, change, flip, factor, 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 cancel the like factors. You end up with these two factors in the top, this one factor at the bottom. Keep, Oh, I think I factored and flipped at the same time. So I factored this numerator and kept it at the top, factored this denominator, kept it at the bottom because this fraction does not flip. Then we change this to times and this will flip, putting the X minus two at the bottom. And if I factor this, I get three times plus two, which we put at the top since it flips. So then the X plus twos cancel, the X minus two cancel leaving us with 3 times x plus 1 and the x plus 3 in the denominator. Here we did the same thing so we factored the numerator into these two, factored the denominator into these two, changed it to times and flipped this over. So the 2x minus 7 which cannot be factored is now at the top and the 4x minus 2 which can have a 4 factored out is now at the bottom. The x minus 3's cancel, the 2x minus 7's cancel, we end up with 3x plus 7 on the top and four times x minus one at the bottom. Here we did the same thing, factored the GCF out there, factored the difference of squares here, changed that to times, flipped this over. This cannot be factored and this cannot be factored, so they stayed the same, but flipped over. Seven x plus three is canceled, but I still have these two factors in the top and I still have these two factors in the denominator. Same thing again, but now they have the x's and the y's. You still factor this out using your AC method or the strategy with X's in the front, Y's in the back. Denominator cannot be factored. Change it to times, flip this over. This can be factored, but its factored version is gonna go at the bottom. This cannot be factored and it's gonna go to the top. So then we reduce the X plus three Y's and that was all we could reduce. So we still have this factor times this factor at the top and two times this factor at the bottom. Again, factored the numerator, factored the denominator, changed it to times, put the x minus 3y at the top, and put this guy's factors at the bottom. We could not reduce anything because there was no top that could reduce with the bottom. So the most we could do is put this two together using a square, put these two together using a square, and then the other guys get written down just as well. Now the next topic is when you're doing three problems. So when you have multiplying and dividing, you need to go from left to right, unless the parentheses indicating you have to do something else first. So if I, there's no parentheses in this problem, which means I need to go from left to right. So I factored these, left them there, change that to times, flip this over. So this guy's factors are at the top. This guy's factors are now at the bottom. I canceled what I could, I ended up with these two factors at the top, three times x plus four at the bottom. Then I brought down the remaining operation. So then now the x plus four is canceled, the x plus three is canceled, leaving me with the x minus five over three. Here I do have a parentheses, which means I have to do this first. So factor at the top, factor at the bottom. This is already a times, so no flipping needed. This stays and this stays. We canceled what we could. We ended up with x over x plus six. So now I need to actually take this and divide it by this x, x plus six. So we factored our denominator here. We did change this to times and we did flip this over. So the x's cancel, the x plus six is cancel, leaving us with seven in the top 
and x plus 3 at the bottom. Here, we did not have any parentheses, so we worked left to right. It's already multiplication, so just factor, factor, factor. Cancel out what you can. You're left with x minus 2, x plus 3, the 8, and then the x plus 5. Bring down the last operation. Since it's division, I have to keep this one exactly the same, change that to multiplying, and flip this fraction over. Then these factors cancel, those factors cancel, leaving me with x plus 3 at the top and 8 at the bottom. Here we're evaluating the rational function, so whatever they plug in the parentheses, that is your x value. So you go to the fraction side and you plug in that x value. And then I end up with, with 9 over 5 when I plugged in negative 6. If I plug in negative 1, I end up with negative 2 at the top and 0 at the bottom, which in your calculator will tell you error. So in the computer, I will select the word undefined. Now, if you get 0 over negative 2 and you type that in your calculator, you'll just get 0, and that you would type in your calculator. So be careful where your 0 is located because it's the difference between these two answers. They are two totally different answers. Now we get into evaluating an expression problem type 2. So now I have a different kind of function, but I'm still plugging in numbers for x. So plug in 9 for x. Again, we have 0 at the bottom, which means it's undefined. Now I'm plugging in negative 2 for x. Make sure when you plug in negative 2, especially for the square and when it's multiplied by a coefficient, that you use parentheses. If you don't use parentheses in your calculator, you will get the wrong value. Now, this turns out to be negative 22. This turns out to be negative 6. So when I reduce, I get positive 3 over 11. And that's what I would type in as my answer. Next, we have domain of a rational function excluded values. So for, it says find all the values of x that are not in the domain. So what that means is what are the x values that when I plug this x value in for x, I get these undefined things back, okay? So that's the stuff that is not in the domain. The numbers that are in the domain, for instance, over here, negative 2 is in the domain of this function because when I plugged it in, I got an answer. 9 is not in the domain because when I plugged it in, I didn't get anything back. I got undefined back, which means there's no answer for that, okay? No value for that. So that's what you want to do here is you want to find out when do these undefined things happen? What x values am I going to get undefined for? Well, that only happens when your denominator is zero. So take your denominator and equal it to zero and then factor each um, this trinomial and then set each factor equal to zero and so you get the two solutions eight and four these are the two numbers that if I plug in eight into all the X's I will get undefined if I plug in four for all the X's I'll so I'll also get undefined so these are the two numbers that are not in my domain now this question is different it's not asking you what is not in the domain it's asking you what is in the domain now that is a lot of things that's an infinite number of things okay think about this out of all the possible numbers you could think of all the real numbers from negative infinity to infinity the only two numbers out of all of those numbers that won't work is eight and four okay so you need to be able to put that idea into what's called interval notation. So I use the same function just to kind of warm you up since we've already done the hard part with the denominator. We've already figured out what would make the denominator undefined. We took it and we set it equal to zero, we factored it, we set each factor to zero, and we got the two numbers that are not in the domain. But everything else is. So what we did was we graphed the number line and we put four and eight and we put holes at four and eight because those two numbers are not in the domain, but everything else is. So we shaded everything else on that number line. Then it was just a matter of translating those three different regions created around the holes into intervals. So this is from negative infinity to four, but there's a hole at four, so the four is not included and we symbolize that with a parenthesis symbol. This middle section goes from four to eight, but again, you can't include four in it because there are holes there, so we symbolize those with parentheses. And then this region over here goes from eight to infinity, 
But again, there's a hole at 8, so you need to use the parentheses to symbolize that. And go all the way to infinity. So here's another example, one more, or two more, I'm sorry. So here, they want us to give them the domain and interval notation. So we took the denominator, equaled it to 0, factored our denominator, and set each factor equal to 0. It just so happens that we ended up with the same number, which means I could plug in anything I want, just not negative 5. So on the number line, I put negative 5 and I put a hole there and everything else can work, just not negative 5. So this interval is represented by negative infinity to negative 5. This interval is represented by negative infinity to positive 5. Or I'm sorry, negative 5 to positive infinity. Then put unions in between all your little segmented um, intervals. Now here, this one's tricky. If I set this equal to 0, I cannot factor it when it has a plus sign. There's only a formula for the difference of squares when it's minus in the middle. So since I can't factor it, I tried to solve it another way. So I minus 81 on both sides, but then I had x squared equal to negative 81. That is not going to have any solutions because think about it. If x is a positive number, when I square it, I'm going to get a positive number. Even if x were a negative answer, when I square a negative, a negative times itself will give me a positive. So there's no way I can get a negative if I'm squaring a number. That's why this equation has no solution. And if I can't get any answers from setting that denominator equal to zero, then that means there's nothing to exclude. So there's no holes in my number line. I can plug anything I want into this function and I'll always get a number back out. So then that means my domain is from negative infinity to infinity. Now that's different as if it were a minus. If it were a minus, I could factor it into x plus 9 and x minus 9, and I could get the two solutions, negative 9 and positive 9, making the two holes and the three different regions, therefore giving me the three different intervals.